Today in Blender, we look at taking a single image and using it to populate an entire retail set full of random product. This technique is extremely easy on performance and takes just a few minutes to set up. Let's take a look at the scenario. Let's say you have this retail shelf and you need to fill it with product. I'm going to show you a technique where you could take one single box and you can duplicate it or instance it. And every time it's instanced, it becomes its own unique label. And you could do that over and over and over again. And every time that you do, it becomes kind of randomized. So you could do that not only with boxes, but we can have these cans here as well. And we could start to instance those and uh, you get the picture. These, these chip bags as well, if we had like a little, little rack of these, we could start to hang those. So I'm gonna show you this technique. It's actually really, really simple. And the best part is it's only using one image texture. So it's incredibly cheap to pull off for Blender. It doesn't really have to think about too much. And um, again, these objects are just instanced over and over again. So it's not even really thinking a lot about geometry either. So let's go to our scene. I just have two um, editor types open here on the side. I have my shader network editor and then I have my UV editor. So let's just focus in on this box first. As you'll see in solid mode or edit mode, or sorry, object mode, this is just one cube and then we have one image texture applied. I have a special node network here that I'll get into in a moment. I'll disconnect that for now. And then here is our one image texture. This is what's called a texture atlas. It's a grid of different image textures that the that Blender is referencing. Um, it happens to be an eight by seven grid and that'll be important in a moment to remember. But we have this. This, in fact, was generated with AI. You don't have to generate yours with AI. You can build your own by hand. Um, you could do that with any kind of image editing program. Um, I just happen to use AI because I wanted it to be quick and easy and, and show you how easy this could be. I don't feel like you need a tutorial on how to use AI. I don't think anyone really needs to know what they're doing. Um, you kind of just type in prompts. And uh, the prompt that I had for this particular image was something like, uh, Atlas texture, variety of different food package labels on one sheet, something like that. And I was able to get these, um, this whole, you know, kind of grid array of, of different textures. Obviously these don't hold up if you, if you go in close, like, I don't know what, uh, Sajadka chips are or Smaro, whatever that is. Um, this doesn't even make sense. And, uh, it's to be expected with AI. It's, it's not quite there yet, but very quick for our purposes. So we have that one image. I dropped that in and plugged it into the base color here. And then, so if we go to render view, you can see that, uh, not much is happening there. I have it unwrapped to uh, kind of fill the area. I just did U and then Q projection um, down here. You could just press U and then C. And then I just kind of scaled this in and scaled it out on the X to fill up the whole space. So nothing special there, um, but this isn't really working yet. As you can see, it, each, each, um, each object isn't instancing its own texture atlas square. So what we have to do for that is we use my Atlas randomizer node. Now this is a pretty complicated node. Um, how I arrived here was basically reverse engineering an existing node for randomizing textures, but then building in the functionality of having horizontal divisions and vertical divisions. So um, these by default, when you download this, will be set to one. You can get this node over at offworlddepot.com. I'll of course link it in the tutorial description. Now you can plug this vector into vector here and nothing will happen until you divide, uh, until you define the horizontal and vertical divisions. So I happen to know that horizontally we have eight uh, kind of columns here. So if I type in eight and then vertically we have seven rows. So eight by seven and then that will fit properly. If this was not the correct number, you could tell pretty quickly uh, you start to have some weird overlaps. So just define how many rows and columns you have and then we can start to duplicate this. So just press Alt D and we can start to build out some shelves here. If you ever don't like the instances that it picked, you could just come here to the seed value and start to randomize that. And let's just take it away and I'll spend a, a minute here just kind of randomizing the uh, set dressing here. I also have using the same exact textures, I have a chip bag and a can here, and these are very low poly as well, just to keep things super performant. So I'm gonna, you know, kind of stop talking for a second and just kind of set dress the scene um, as best I can.
okay, I'm back. That was that was really fast. Really didn't take me too long. And just like that, you could see instancing these. Um, we quickly created some good variety. If I wanted to take this further, I might use maybe two texture atlases, maybe three. Um, even with the randomization, you can start to see some repeating colors here, and and uh, you could take this a step further. But as you can see here, this is really really uh, easy on the scene. We could just keep this going, keep duplicating and instancing this for a long time before Blender starts to give us any kind of trouble. So I'm going to scale that back though, um, just to our original. And then, like I said, you don't have to use AI. You can build your own texture atlas for this. I wanted to show that quickly in Photoshop. So what I have here is I walked around a store with my cell phone and just took pictures of like shirts and pants. And then I put them out on a grid in Photoshop. You could do this in any image editing program. In Photoshop, um, you can build the grid just by going up here to view and then go down to guides and go to new guide layout. And then you could choose how many columns and rows that you want. In this case, I had 25 images, so I just did five by five. And then what I did is I imported a single, or sorry, I made a single plane and um, I plugged our image texture into that. And then I plugged the alpha into alpha. So it's uh, got a transparent background. And then I plugged our Atlas randomizer node into it and just did a five by five grid. Now this is extremely easy on the computer because these are literally just planes. And this may not hold up under really close inspection, but that's not really the point. The point is to get um, very low poly, um, easy on memory, easy on the, the computer, just quickly fill a whole scene with assets. And uh, you know, this may be in a window kind of at a distance um, behind a layer of glass, but you can quickly fill a whole store with this stuff and really it's not going to take too much performance away from your computer. Again, it may not hold up when you get really close and you start to look around, you start to notice like, okay, that's, that's definitely a plane. But if you think about the alternative, if you had like actual uh, cloth shirts being simulated, you know, or if you, even if you had cloth shirts that were optimized and baked down, you're still going to have a lot more geometry than what we're accomplishing here which is literally just a bunch of planes. It's, it's kind of crazy that you can get away with that. So that's a quick look at this technique. If you want to see more videos, more tutorials, go support my personal website, offworlddepot.com. When you subscribe to the videos, you also get immediate access to the whole asset library. There are no download limits. There are no point systems. You just kind of download what you need. And uh, I'm adding more every day.